Now through education, regulation, uh, science, we know that wetlands are some of our greatest natural treasures. One of the few uh, land uses that can take all that polluted nitrogen uh, in polluting forms I talked about and denitrify, change it back into N2 gas, right up back into the atmosphere. Uh, I think if wetlands could send us a bill for that work, you know, wetlands around the bay, if we had to replace them with modern sewage treatment, it would cost us billions a year, but we don't think of wetlands as out there doing billions a year of useful work. So wetlands, that's almost victory there, except that sea level rise from climate change may cover them all up, but that's another lecture too. Uh, a really important one is the oyster. You know, for most of the history of the Chesapeake, the history of the United States, the history of the world, oysters were two things. They were good to eat, oysters on the half shelves, steamed oysters, and a, a, uh, an important part of commerce, uh, a lot of money came through Maryland and Virginia from catching oysters. Only in the last 20 years have we begun to think of them ecologically. Oysters can filter a lot of pollution out of the bay if we ever could restore them. Uh, oysters, even greater than their value as a filter, is their value as a community. Oysters are reef filters. If you don't keep dredging them and tonging them up, they build vertical reefs with lots of niches. They're kind of the temperate zone equivalent of the coral reef. Don't get as much press because they're not as pretty, but uh, they provide so much habitat. And I believe that this shift in the conversation, this change in the lens of viewing oysters as ecosystems it is really gonna, it, it's why Maryland's now investing tens of millions in building oyster sanctuaries really trying to restore them. Same thing's going on with Menhaden. They're an oily little fish that inhabits a lot of the East Coast and the Gulf Coast and Chesapeake Bay. Uh, they're not much good to eat, but they have been caught for more than a century by the millions of tons uh, for fish oil, and they're used in cosmetics and paint. But now we are beginning to realize they are also critical to the survival of things we do like to eat, like striped bass and loons, we don't eat loons, but a, a, a whole range of, of creatures that we love, uh, loons and certain waterfowl and almost, well, a guy, a scientist wrote to W.K. Brooks in the 1880s, all fish in the Chesapeake Bay are just men hating other form, and meaning they were the important forage fish. So we're realizing the ecological value. And you know what's hard about this is it means we have to share with nature. We can't catch all the oysters for us. We can't catch all the menhaden for us. We have to share. That sharing doesn't come easy. It's not just kids that have trouble sharing.